Well, to talk a little more about that arrest warrant, I'm very pleased to be joined now by Steve Costas. He's a senior legal officer at the Open Society Justice Initiative. Welcome to the programme, sir, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, we'll talk about the warrant itself in just a moment. But first of all, take us back to 2013, if you can. This was the height of the Syrian revolution against Assad's regime. Chemical weapons were used in the suburbs of Damascus. Remind us what Assad is alleged to have done here. So, um, as you said, the uh, Syrian civil war was uh, well underway at that point, And the Syrian government was losing control of uh, various territory. The area of uh, the suburbs of Damascus, called the Eastern Ghouta and, and Duma, were under the control of opposition groups and were um, uh, largely populated by civilians. Um, the Syrian uh, government began using chemical weapons in civilian areas, and uh, and the attack in 2013 in Eastern Ghouta, which killed more than a thousand civilians, most of them women and children. Uh, was one of the um, largest chemical attacks in this last century and, and is considered one of the most heinous crimes committed during the conflict. And you've described the issuing of this arrest warrant for Bashar al-Assad as an historic moment. Just explain to us why. Well, exactly. This is the first, uh, it's historic in a number of ways. It's the first criminal case to address the chemical weapons attacks committed by the Syrian government. It's the first time in the history of, uh, of international law and in uh, the law on international justice that a foreign sitting head of state has been charged by a national court for international crimes. And uh, it's the first time that victims have testified about uh, what happened to them in a court uh, to investigating judges. Um, and so that uh, these are all sort of really welcome developments and important for the victims, uh, survivors and for our Syrian partners. Absolutely. That said, though, what do you think the chances are that Assad will actually face trial? Well, there are a few there are a few uh, legal questions still to be resolved. Um, first, as I said, this is an unprecedented step by the French courts. It's um, I think what, what we are seeing is that the French courts have said uh, the victims have presented their evidence, uh, extensive evidence from experts, from uh, defector witnesses, um, from victims. Viewing all that evidence, they found sufficient evidence that um, Bashar al-Assad and his brother and his two associates uh, have, a, have questions to answer. So um, if they complete their investigation and that um, their investigation is still underway and they find that there's sufficient evidence to refer it for trial. There is the possibility in France uh, to hold a trial in absentia under certain conditions that protect the rights of defendants. Um, before that, we'll have, a, we'll have a big question about whether a, an arrest warrant against a foreign sitting head of state, um, uh, what the meaning of that is. And I hope that this will be a watershed moment in the justice for international crimes where we finally see that the absolute immunity that foreign sitting heads of state have enjoyed um, can be called into question, particularly for such, um, such significant core international crimes. And the timing of this arrest warrant seems at least to me to be important because in recent months, Assad, you know, having been seen for a long time as a real pariah on the world stage, is increasingly being welcomed back into the fold, particularly in the Middle East. He's been invited, for example, to the COP climate summit in the UAE later on this month. Um, I wonder, with this arrest warrant now hanging over him, can he realistically go to COP? Well, so I think first... Just to say that timing, I don't think is is politically designed at all by the justice uh, uh, justice system. This is in response to a case that victims and Syrian groups and our and our my own group filed in 2021. But as you say, it's very politically significant, and I think it um, is really important that the international community not welcome uh, the Assad government back. Uh, into uh, into normal relations, and um, and how could they, knowing now that he's charged with that he's under uh, an arrest warrant for such serious crimes, 
and uh, and we'll find out today what the ICJ says about um, uh, violations of the Convention Against Torture. All right. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, although I would like to ask you about that. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it there. Steve Costas talking to me from the Open Society Justice Initiative. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.